Summer Villa is a romantic comedy made in 2016 about a romance novelist with writer's block and a celebrity chef suffering from a bad review who accidentally end up staying at the same French villa for the summer. As they attempt to share the house and mend their personal lives, they find that what they're really missing is more of a personal matter. The movie opens with Terry trying to get inspiration to write, we see her try different things that just aren't working. When she finally settles on her system, she hears loud music from downstairs. She goes down and sees it's coming from her daughter's room, so she knocks and goes in to tell her daughter and friend Jessica that the music is too loud, and she cannot hear herself think, let alone write. Her daughter's friend leaves and she begins to talk to her about a concert that weekend which she says her daughter is not going unsupervised. Her daughter accuses her of not having a life, and because of that, she doesn't want anyone else to have one. Terry disagrees and tells her she has a blind date that same night. The next scene is in a popular restaurant. The chef is going through the restaurant that is very full, all the while greeting familiar faces. Turns out he is a celebrity chef as someone walks up to him to get an autograph, proclaiming she is a very big fan of his. After he signs the autograph, his assistant meets him to tell him she booked him for the Today Show and also needs him for half an hour for the investors' meeting. He then says they have to push the meeting because he has to work on the dinner menu. Then she tells him it's fine the way it is. She then tells him they need to work on franchising the restaurant instead. A sous chef walks up to him to taste a dish, but he tells him he knows it's good the way it is already. Then he asks his assistant why she is so pushy, saying this is the reason why their relationship didn't work out. He says it was way more complicated than that. He then suddenly remembers that he has a date that evening. He tells her she only has 30 minutes of his time as he has to change for the blind date his sister set him for. His assistant then tells him that everyone knows he doesn't need a blind date to get a date. He answers by saying that not everyone thinks so, as his sister thinks he needs one. In the next scene, Terry arrives for her blind date in a taxi. She is contemplating whether she should stay or go. She decides to go but someone immediately takes her taxi and because of that, she is forced to stay. She sits at the bar and waits for her date. After ordering a glass of wine for herself, she sees a man in a suit making his way towards her. It is Matthew the chef. She is excited and hoping it is her blind date but it looks like it is not as he instead walks up to the lady next to her. She is immediately disappointed because he is there to meet her and has mistaken the other lady for her. He realizes she is the one he is there to meet when a fan of hers walks up to her and mentions her name. The fan asks her when her next book is coming out but she doesn't give a straight answer as she is currently struggling to even start. He ends the conversation with the other lady and turns towards Terry. He says hi to Terry and tells her he didn't notice her there, and she tells him he is not helping his case by saying that to her. She then tells him he has great pickup lines, and he asks her if she liked the one he used. She gets irritated and motions to leave because she thinks he is a player, and he responds by saying it is ironic how she is a romance writer who is single, and still not giving the blind date a chance. She tells him it was nice to meet him and leaves immediately. After she leaves, Matthew finds out that there had been a popular critic in his restaurant all this while, and that was the person the young sous chef had been preparing a meal for. He becomes immediately agitated that he was not the one that cooked for him. His assistant tells him she couldn't distract him from the date because it wasn't proper. He sees the critic get up and leave. He runs after him, only to meet Terry, who is still standing outside. She tries to talk to him, thinking he had run out to meet her and apologize to her. But as she is about to talk to him, he blows her off and goes after the critic. The critic tells him he will give him a bad review and he begs him not to. The critic tells him that he is now a parody of himself and just a face of his food before he leaves him standing outside. In the next scene, we see Matthew laying on his counter, reading the review the critic had left for him in the papers. He asks his assistant if he really was a sellout, but she tries to make him feel better. It fails badly, because soon enough, he is beginning to see the effect of the review on his restaurant. After this, Terry is talking about Matthew with his sister Leslie. She says he is only after the next girl and doesn't want to find the right girl. He calls his sister when Terry is still discussing with her, and tells her that the previous night had been a disaster, and the literal worst nights of his life. She assumes that he is talking about the date with Terry even though he had actually been talking about the bad review. Then he added that he didn't want Leslie not to set him up with any of her uptight friends again. After the call, Terry and Leslie talk about her book, and Leslie informs her that if she didn't finish the book by September, she was gonna lose her publishing deal. Then she tells her that she needs new inspiration, and hands her the key to her family villa in France, and tells her she is not going there anymore, because she feels like Terry needs it the most. She even encourages her to take her daughter Abby if it will help her and give her inspiration to finish her book. Terry and Abby arrive at the villa in France. Abby notes that she would rather actually be back at home in the city and with her friends. Abby starts to freak out the moment she notices that there is no internet in the villa. Terry is genuinely taken by how beautiful the villa was, but Abby couldn't care less. After settling down, Terry 
looks out of one of the windows from her bedroom and sees a strange man swimming in the pool. She goes down to challenge the person and finds out that it was Matthew. They are both honestly surprised to see each other. Matthew calls Leslie immediately and tells her to get Terry to leave, and Leslie tells them the house was extremely big. It had many bedrooms and just as many bathrooms, and as adults, they could definitely make it work and figure out a way to stay together in peace. She ends the call before both Matthew and Terry press on. Matthew tells Terry he likes his kitchen in pristine condition and always clean, and she tells him she writes in the morning and likes it quiet. The pact was that he could not talk in the morning and she had to stay out of the kitchen. They make the deal and shake on it. The whole pact is soon out of the window the next morning, as Abby is making breakfast in the kitchen and the kitchen is a disaster. Matthew walks in, sees it, and starts complaining. Abby and Terry tell him they don't know how to work the coffee maker, and Matthew then tells them he will be in charge of making morning coffee, and that they shouldn't touch anything. He then tells them they are changing the house rules. First, since it is his house, he is allowed to talk anytime he wants to. And also, Abby was allowed to use the kitchen, but only if she learned, at the least, basic kitchen hygiene. While they talk, it turns into an argument, and both Terry and Abby storm out of the kitchen, leaving Matthew to tend to the mess left behind. Terry goes upstairs to try to write, then she decides to take a bicycle and get out. It turns out she can't ride one, so she eventually leaves the bike and goes into town without it. Matthew is in the pool when Abby brings him food. He thinks it would turn out terrible but he is pleasantly surprised when it doesn't. Meanwhile, in town, Terry is at a restaurant trying to write. She meets a fan who strikes a conversation with her. He is also a popular French chef named Jean, who owned a restaurant in the next village, and it turns out that he also knew Matthew, who had had ridden over on a bicycle while Terry and Jean were talking. Terry suggests that he joins the competition called Flavor of France that Jean had just been telling her about. Jean informs her that he had won the competition four years in a row, and this year, he was going to make it five years in a row, no matter what. In the next scene, while Terry is struggling to write, Matthew is struggling to cook in the kitchen with all the clutter and mess left there by Abby every day. Terry leaves her book and goes outside to meet Abby at the poolside, where she tries to convince her to do anything else, but be on her phone. Abby tells her she is watching an old video of Matthew, and that he reminded her of Terry when she was fun and didn't used to be uptight. Later in the night, Terry finds it difficult to sleep, so she goes outside. She finds Matthew, who is awake, in the kitchen. He also couldn't sleep, yet he still insisted that he had the perfect cure for her insomnia, which was his grandfather's secret hot chocolate. He then proceeds to apologize about how he has been acting, and then she tells him she knew why, and that she was informed by Leslie. He then added that it bothered him because he had not been given a bad review since he left culinary school. The next day, Matthew is in the greenhouse tending to vegetables he is growing as ingredients for his kitchen. Abby asks him why he won't just buy them from the store instead. He tells her it is because it tastes better when it is grown fresh. Matthew then notices that something was up with Abby. He pushes her to tell him, and she opens up that her best friend had been spending time with a girl she knew was bad news, and that when they talk these days, her friend always says she has to go, as if she doesn't really want to talk to her. Matthew tells her that if Jessica was really her friend, she was going to be waiting for her when she gets back. Abby cheers up and ends up helping Matthew with the plants. Meanwhile, Terry is still struggling to write. Matthew brings her a lemonade to make her feel better. He also tells her that the tension and pressure was only going to bring out the best in her and tells her to keep trying. While they are still talking, Abby comes to join them and tells Terry that Jean is here. Matthew is immediately irritated because he thinks Jean has come to see him, maybe because he wants to convince him to join the competition. But Abby tells them he is here to see Terry instead. Terry goes out to meet him and finds him with flowers for her. She is curious how he found out she was staying at the villa, and he tells her that it was a small town, which made it very easy to find people. He then asks her out on a date, but she answers with a maybe, mostly because she is always swamped with work. He then sees Abby and Matthew spying on them. Jean greets them, and they respond by quickly slamming the door shut. Matthew and Abby go back to the kitchen, and Matthew makes a dish for them to taste. It turns out to be great, and Terry then invites Matthew to go out with her. Although he initially declines, he decides to agree, on the condition that he teaches her how to ride a bicycle. She agrees and he spends the next moments teaching her. The moment she gets it, they ride to the market together, to get ingredients. Matthew goes into a meat store and is recognized by the butcher named Nadia. She asks him if he came to France to work with Jean. Matthew is appalled by the accusation and quickly corrects her. She tells him to try an ingredient. He replies by telling her that he could make the best lamb she had ever tasted in her life. Then he proceeds to invite her to the villa in the evening for a dinner date. Terry and Matthew come back to the villa to find that the kitchen was a mess again, and they are both surprised, as they had been through this several times with Abby. Terry is about to go meet Abby, but Matthew tells her to allow him to handle this. He goes to meet Abby by the poolside. She is expecting him to scold her but instead, he invites her to come cook something with him. Afterwards, Terry comes to the kitchen to see Matthew and Abby cooking and bonding. 
she is given something to taste and finds it very delicious. Matthew tells her that it is lamb, and she is surprised, as she has never tasted lamb that tasted like this, but he soon tells her that it's mostly the pancreas. She immediately finds it gross, even though she had initially thought it was delicious. They start to argue, and it turns into a fun food fight, until there's a knock on the door to end the fun. It is the butcher from the market. Matthew informs them that it is not a date but a business meeting. They don't buy his excuse, but they let it slide. He meets Nadia at the door and invites her inside for their date. Abby later comes up to talk about Terry and Matthew. She knows Terry likes Matthew, but Terry doesn't admit it, and instead stays in and doesn't talk to Matthew, who is currently on a date with the butcher. Later in the evening, Terry wakes up and looks downstairs from her window, and finds that Matthew was still on his date with Nadia by the poolside. She could hear them laughing and talking faintly. She decides to sneak outside and spy on them, but as she is doing this, she ends up falling in the pool. Matthew tries to help her, but she declines. When she gets out of the pool, Nadia asks if she is Matthew's wife. They both strongly deny it, but Nadia doesn't buy it and still thinks there's something weird going on. Because of that, she leaves quickly. The next day, Matthew tells Abby to cook a swordfish even though she has never done it before. He also tells her that the whole kitchen was at her disposal too. While they are talking, Terry comes, and all dressed up, and tells them she had agreed to go on a date with Jean, and that they were going to have a picnic. Abby tells Matthew he has no game after she leaves but Jean does. This annoys Matthew who claims he definitely had more game than Jean and because of that, he was going to enter the competition. Meanwhile, Jean and Terry are getting to know each other during the picnic. Jean tells her about cooking, and she tells him about her new books, the plot of which sounded so much like what was happening in the villa recently. Later in the evening, when Terry comes back from her date, she meets Matthew, who is still awake. When he asks about her date, she doesn't seem so excited about it. She tells him that she found Jean to be very nice and charming, but she was not crazy about him like she wanted to be. They get into an argument about relationships, and they disagree about a multitude of things, until Matthew finally leaves. Both Matthew and Terry continue living in the villa and both keep working on their crafts and trying to perfect it. Terry is writing more these days while Matthew and Abby are cooking together more often. One evening, Abby texts both Matthew and Terry to come for hot chocolate, and when they arrive at the table, they find each other and no sign of Abby anywhere. They apologize to each other and finally make up. The next day, Matthew invites Terry for a walk and talks to her about her book. She is embarrassed that he even sets out time to read them, and he tells her to close her eyes. When she does, he feeds her some strawberries. Instead of being swooned by the romantic gesture, for some reason, she turns away from him after that and suddenly begins to leave, telling him she needed to go and write. He screams towards her before she goes, asking her if she would like to have dinner with him in his favorite restaurant in the world. Terry agrees before she finally leaves. Later in the day, while Terry is dressing up to go on the date, Abby tells her she looks great and apologizes for being annoying at the beginning of the vacation. She also adds that even though she had initially not wanted to come and wasn't enjoying herself, she was having a blast now. Terry says her goodbyes to Abby and steeps out to see Matthew stand outside next to a vintage Mercedes. He also compliments her on her looks and opens the car door for her. They arrive at the restaurant, where they are ushered to their reserved seat. It turned out the chef René was Matthew's mentor, and Terry had met him earlier. While they are there, Matthew notices that they are struggling with their orders and quickly excuses himself to go check up on René. He goes to the kitchen and finds René doing everything alone. René tells him that he currently had no sous chef or kitchen assistant, as none of them had shown up that day. Matthew quickly removes his jacket, wears an apron and begins to assist him. They end the night on a great note with Matthew helping in the kitchen and Terry helping with waiting tables. Matthew apologizes for this and tells Terry he didn't plan for the night to go this way, but she tells him she didn't mind and it was fun seeing him help and cook. When they get home, they see Abby crying. She tells them that Savannah and Jessica had been saying terrible things about her online, and Terry and Matthew try to comfort her, but it doesn't work. She soon storms out on them after blaming Terry for her current situation with her friends, as she believes it would not have happened if she never came to France. The next morning, Terry leaves her writing and comes to sit with Abby, who is still sad and in a sour mood. Terry is finally able to comfort Abby and she lightens up. She also encourages Abby to go help Matthew with his preparation for the contest. Terry later sees Jean, who invites her for a drink, but she tells him she can't come, as she is helping Matthew prepare for the flavor of France. Gina is angry and outrightly tells Terry that he is going to win, but Terry defends Matthew and insists that he is also a great cook and has a shot at winning. Matthew is shown having a discussion with Abby. He is telling her about his life as a boy. She also asks her to be his sous chef for the contest and she agrees. While Terry spends most of her days writing, he and Abby spend it together, cooking and preparing for the contest. Terry tells Matthew to make Eo the same dish he got a bad review on when he is confused about which dish to make. He is skeptical of her suggestions and she tells him she believes he can improve it. It's the day of the contest, and Matthew is thanking Terry for all of her help while setting up to leave for the contest. Their interaction gets heated, and they almost make out in the kitchen. 
but are interrupted by a knock on the door. In comes Matthew's assistant. She brings him a newspaper that informs him that Dominic, the critic that had almost ended his career, was the same person that was going to judge the contest. This immediately leaves Matthew annoyed and on edge. He tells his assistant that he didn't need to see this and didn't think he was ready to face this. But he is encouraged and finally gets into a good place. As soon as Matthew had finished setting up his workspace, he and Jean stared down at each other. He almost starts a cook-off with Jean, until Abby reminds him to focus on the dish, rather than focus on the competition. He agrees and does exactly that. They start to compete, and the pressure begins to build. Jean continues to try to get into Matthew's head, by cooking the same dish he was preparing, and also adding finesse and flamboyance to his cooking, to draw attention. Matthew finishes his own meal, way behind Jean, just at the nick of time. The contest is finally over, and they wait for the verdict of the judge and the winner to be announced. Matthew is then announced as the winner, to everyone's delight and Jean's surprise. He meets Mr. Dominic, who tells him that his cooking was extraordinary this time. He was impressed that he had discovered himself again. Matthew then introduces Renee to Mr. Dominic. Meanwhile, Terry finally finishes her book and goes to meet Matthew and Abby. She is very excited to show the both of them the manuscript. But when she arrives at the living room, Matthew's assistant comes with good news and tells him that he is popular again, and chef Matthew Cupid is back. He was currently the most written about in all the popular magazines and every popular restaurant wanted him. He had been offered to do a show, where he would cook a romantic meal for a different single lady at a romantic location. Matthew is excited but Terry is not, even though she is happy for him. She brushes aside her manuscript and tells him she doesn't have anything to tell him. Later, Terry calls Leslie to tell her that she had finished her book, and Leslie tells her that it was great news. She agrees and says she knows she is supposed to be happy, but she has also fallen in love with Matthew in the process, and doesn't know how to handle that. She tells her it wasn't meant to be, as she was going to return to her boring, normal life, while Matthew would be touring the world and cooking for different single ladies. Leslie tells her not to be sad, and that she had given it all her best, and should be proud of herself. The next day, Terry begins to pack, and Matthew walks in on her doing this. She tells him it had been a wonderful summer, but it was time for them to return to their normal life and back to reality. Matthew asks Terry if that was it, and Terry says it was, and they hug and say their goodbyes. Matthew gives Abby a gift and promises to visit as much as he can. They then finally leave to have one final dinner at Renee's restaurant. As soon as they leave, Matthew finds Terry's manuscript beside her bed and decides to read through it. While reading, he finds out that Terry has feelings for him. As soon as he is done, he tells his assistant that he is not interested in going on a cooking show anymore. He doesn't want to go back to New York. He wants to stay with Terry because he is in love. She tells him she is glad he found love, and he goes to meet Terry and Abby at Renee's restaurant. Matthew arrives, just as Terry and Abby are about to leave. Matthew confesses his feelings for Terry and tells her he wants to stay. They finally share their first kiss, as well as a bottle of wine, before the movie ends.